Now we're getting into sketching graphs and we have to represent real life information with a graph. So in this case, we're looking at number of kilometers height and we can see that they're going up to 16 kilometers for the day and the time of day. So they start at seven and they finish at two in the afternoon. So the key thing is we have to read the graph and figure out what's happening. So we see that we're going up to four kilometers by 8.30. So we're doing four kilometers in 1.5 hours. We can kind of see the speed that we're going based on those numbers. Now from B to C, you see that it, they're not moving. They're not moving away or closer to where they started. So from B to C, it's break. They have stopped moving and we can see that anytime there's a horizontal line. So they stop for half an hour and at nine o'clock they keep traveling. Notice that the, this line is the same steepness as this one. And what we see is that we go from four to eight. So we travel four kilometers again and 1030. And so we can see it's exact same speed. They're going the same distance in the same time. So it's key. Slope or the steepness represents how fast they're going. D to E is a much longer break, 10.30 to 11.30. So let's just put this in early lunch. They took a long break, they were tired. They've traveled eight kilometers. They get back at it at 11.30 and they travel yet again, four kilometers. Oh, this one's four kilometers in one and a half hours. And again, we can see that because it's the same steepness. Now, the key one, G to H is this one here. Right away, we can see that it's steeper. And if we look at the numbers, we're going four kilometers in half an hour. So we can see that, yes, we must be going much faster. We have to come up with a reason. Maybe we realized we're getting late in the day. We have to get home, we have to catch the bus. So they hike faster or they start running. But the key thing is they are going much faster, three times as fast in that last segment. The steeper the slope, the faster you're going. So the next ones I want you to go through, pause the video, uh, make sure you try and figure out which one represents each situation. Key thing, every time, look at what's on the axes. This one, you've got speed versus time elapsed. This one is distance from ground, time elapsed. So look at it before deciding which one represents the situation. Once you've got all the answers down and you've, you've got tried out every single one, then start the video and see what happens. So number one, a train pulls into a station and lets off its passengers. Now the key thing we have to visualize what happens when the train comes to a station. It's probably slowing down its speed and then stops before letting out the passengers. So speed has to be, well, this one's going fast and then just stops like it hit a brick wall. Can't be this one. This one, speed is slowing down and stops. That one looks good. The other one never stops. It's almost like they jump out of the train because it's slowing, speeding, slowing, speeding. And this one also looks like it hit a brick wall and then everybody gets out. So it has to be B. Slowing down till it stops. And at this point, speed is zero. Passengers can get off the train. Now, a man takes a ride on a Ferris wheel. The key thing is time elapsed is along the bottom. Right away we can see, well, this, this can't be possible. You're actually going backwards in time, then forwards in time. You can't go back on yourself when you have time at the bottom. So definitely not this one. Time elapsed. So we're looking at distance from the ground. He goes up, down, up, down. Looks fairly good, but I'm just wondering, does he get off? This one, time elapsed, he's going up, down. He doesn't go as high and that doesn't make sense. A Ferris wheel does not get shorter 
the second time you go up. So it definitely can't be this one. And this one, again, you can't go backwards in time. So it definitely has to be this one. It goes up and it goes to the same height, comes back down. And I would guess that this would be the platform where he gets on and off. So maybe he climbs stairs at the beginning. A woman climbs a hill at a steady pace and then starts to run down one side. So the thing is, we need a speed where it's steady. This definitely has steady. This one, she's getting faster, then slower. It doesn't make sense. She's increasing her speed. She's getting faster and then steady. And this one, it's all over the place. She's getting faster, slower, faster. So it really has to be this one. She keeps a steady speed and then starts running. Moving on to number four, a child swings on a swing. So we got time at the bottom, so we definitely can't go backwards, but none of them go backwards like the Ferris wheel. Distance from ground. So a swing, obviously, it's, she's going to go up, come back down, up and down. So it's going to happen repeatedly. Now, the key thing about a swing is you could go higher, you could go lower. So we have to be careful with this one. This one here, she goes up, down. Notice that she comes down to the same level, which is pretty realistic, but she's getting higher each time. So maybe she's swinging faster and faster. This one doesn't look likely. It, look, it looks like she's shooting into the air. So I don't think so unless, well, I don't think she wants to be flying through the air. Distance from the ground, she comes down and goes back up. But the key thing with that is you don't start at the highest point. You always start a swing at the low point and swing up. So it can't be this one. And this one, it starts in the middle. It goes down and then up. And it has this, doesn't look realistic. Again, this is the best option. And a child climbs up a slide and then slides down. So picture it. You've got a slide. You probably go upstairs. and then you slide down. But the thing is, this graph has speed. So we have to be careful with that one. How fast is she going up and then down? And she, so she's probably going a pretty steady pace. She's going at a steady pace going up the stairs, but not too fast. She gets to the top, she probably pauses. She might have to set herself down and then she'll start slow and speed up as she hits the bottom of the slide. So the only one that starts steady, this one looks like she's climbing the stairs, but we're not talking about height, we're talking about speed. This one has a steady speed to start with, then she, oh, she pauses while she sits down, she starts sliding, she's going faster and faster, and when you reach the bottom of the slide, suddenly you hit that bottom and you stop. This one makes sense. And this one's the hardest one because it's focused on speed, not on the height of the child. 